We're going to start this video talking about pathology of the female reproductive system. And we'll start from the outside end, so your vulva first and then your vagina next. The vulva is the outside part of your female reproductive system, so your labia is your vestibule, mons pubis, etc. One of the most common pathologies of your vulva is warts or condylomas. Condylomas are caused by a virus, HPV. We'll talk about HPV in further videos, but know that HPV revs up the cell cycles, cause them to grow more frequently, and sometimes they mutate because they're growing so much. And that mutation can cause things like warts, it can cause things like cancer. But here we're talking just about warts. And so these are lower risk strains of HPV. They're not as high risk as those ones that cause cancer. So these are strains like HPV 6 and 11. And like I said, they rev up the cell cycle and because they're revving up so much, they sometimes mutate. And so you can see nuclei changes. They look more crumpled. You can see cellular changes. They don't look as uniform. We call all this coelocytic change. And you need to be able to identify coelocytic change just from an image. There are some images in my notes uh, sometimes I've seen questions where they don't even mention HPV, they just show a picture of coelocytic change and they want you to put two and two together. So be able to identify coelocytic change. Another thing that can involve your vulva is lichen sclerosis. Lichen sclerosis, no one really knows what causes it. Seen in postmenopausal women more commonly, causes thinning and fibrosis of the skin. So thin skin almost looks like parchment paper or wax paper, so paper-like, and can be itchy, can be painful. Because it's seen in postmenopausal women, they think there might be some sort of hormonal changes that go along with this. But another theory is that there's autoimmune components to it. There's some sort of um, immune reaction because to treat these, you can treat them with topical steroids. Whatever the case, just know how to identify it. Very thin parchment-like vulva and seen more in post-menopausal women. On the opposite spectrum, you have lichen simplex chronicus. Chronic, because it's due to chronic inflammation. So chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation for whatever reason, and because it's due to chronic inflammation, is seen in any ages, seen in any age, and your body will try and compensate through that chronic inflammation, that chronic chafing with hyperplasia. So you're gonna see hyperplasia. Instead of the thin, white, parchment-looking skin, you have thick, leathery, dark skin. So thick, dark, vulva. Something to note, <clears throat> there's a slight increased risk of cancer from these two, especially lichen sclerosis. If you're in any suspicion that it might be cancer or not lichen sclerosis, always just take a biopsy of it. Okay. Next is Bartholin cyst. Bartholin cyst come from Bartholin ducts. So this is the outside of your vagina. Your Bartholin glands make lubrication for your vagina, and if that duct gets blocked, you can have a cyst. So you have a swelling, very painful, very large cyst, easy to identify. That is your Bartholin cyst. Now let's move on to malignancy of the vulva. So vulva malignancy. You can have vulva carcinoma, Now we talked about two things already that can cause cancer. The first one, high risk HPV strains because they cause your cell cycle to rev up, cause cells to grow more and they can mutate more. So they can be from HPV, which is the most common. Or we also talked about things like lichen sclerosis, lichen simplex chronicus, chronic inflammation. So those are two causes of vulvar carcinoma. One more rare cause of vulvar malignancy is called, is called extra mammary pagets. When you learn about the breast, you're gonna learn about Paget's disease. 
And namely, what gives away Paget's disease is there's a, a red, painful lesion on the breast. They call this extra mammary Paget's because you get that same red lesion, but it's not on your breast. It's on a different site. And that's why I call it extra mammary Paget's. That site is your vulva, and it represents carcinoma in situ. What they absolutely want you to know is that sometimes melanoma, skin cancer, can occur on your vulva and look like extra mammary pagets. And you need to be able to differentiate the two. Melanoma involves your melanocytes, which are neurocrest cells. Neurocrest cells are S100 positive on staining. They, however, don't stain for things like keratin or pass. So they are keratin and pass negative. Mammary pagets is not from Neurocrest origin, so it's S100 negative. S100 stains for cells that are of Neurocrest origin, so it's negative. It is, however, keratin and pass positive. No S100, that's probably the main one, but this is how you separate the two through biopsy. That is your vulva, let's move on to vagina. To understand vaginal pathology, you also need to know how it's developed embryologically. The development of your urinary tract and your genital tract are very similar. They both come from ducts that start to develop and form different structure. We'll take your urinary tract for example. If this is your mesonephric duct, it will eventually become your ureters and your kidneys and your urinary system. Your mesonephric duct will attach to a bottom part of your embryo near your pelvis. There's no holes in this part yet. It just attaches there, kind of puts its foot down there. There's your colaca. Your colaca, as you develop, will start to make invaginations and holes and openings for your urinary tract and for your genital tract, okay? But it's not there yet, so it looks flat like this. Your urinary tract will attach, start to form. Near your mesonephric duct, you have what are called indifferent gonads. They are exactly what they sound like. They're just gonads waiting for either a Y chromosome or the lack of a Y chromosome to become your actual gonads, either your testicles or your ovaries. But because we're talking about female reproductive tract, we're gonna talk about the ovaries, okay? So these will eventually become your ovaries. Also at this time, you, you have another duct forming. This is called your Mullerian duct. It forms next to the mesonephric duct, so sometimes it's also called para-mesonephric duct. Whatever the case may be, between your paramesonephric duct and your indifferent gonads, these form the majority of your female reproductive system. They'll start to turn and form into your fallopian tubes and your ovaries. They'll start to fuse and form your uterus, and they'll also form the upper one-third of the vagina. And it is, at this time, columnar epithelium. So what forms the lower two-third? Will be your colaca. Your colaca will start to invaginate and form this little sinus or urogenital sinus. That sinus will continue to invaginate and meet with the paranephric ducts and form the lower two-third of the vagina, and that is squamous. So you have your lower to third vagina made out of squamous. You'll have your upper one third from your paramesonephric duct made out of columnar. And again, your paramesonephric duct eventually become your uterus and the rest of your, and the rest of your genital tract. However, we know that in newborns, 
That columnar eventually becomes replaced by squamous. That is what normally happens. So the squamous will replace that columnar and then now your vagina is completely squamous epithelium. What type of squamous? Non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. That's right. That is some embryo, hope that made sense. You need to understand that for a few reasons. One, one for a disorder called adenosis. This is when the columnar isn't replaced by squamous. So you have that lasting columnar. We'll say lasting columnar. Now this can be because it wasn't replaced or, or sometimes these cells can undergo metaplasia, metaplasia and change from squamous to columnar. Whatever the case may be, this isn't normal. There's an increased risk of cancer, namely clear cell adenocarcinoma. They call it clear cell because the cells are full of glycogen. They look kind of clear. A thing that's been asked on the step and is more historical than anything is that a long time ago, we used to give women a drug called DES and that helped prevent miscarriage. It will soon discontinue once they found out that it caused birth defects and it also caused adenosis, an increased risk of their cell adenocarcinoma. Okay, so associated with DES use. You'll very rarely see it now because that was a long time ago, but historically it's very important that you know is associated with DES use. Are there other types of cancer other than clear cell? Sure. You can have squamous cell carcinoma. What do you think causes squamous cell carcinoma? It'd be HPV. HPV is one of the most common causes of cancer in the reproductive tract, period. We're going to talk about HPV when we talk about the cervix. And one last one is called sarcoma. Arteroides, which is a rhabdomyosarcoma variant. So rhabdo So rhabdomyosarcoma. Judging by the name is from mutated muscle cells. It looks like grapes. You ever had just a bunch of grapes? That's what it looks like. And it comes out of the vagina in younger patients, so usually less than four years old. Very, very distinct. A picture will be on my notes, but know that it's grape-like from muscle cells. And it's seen in younger patients. Because it's from muscle cells, it stains positive for things like myoglobin, and also stains positive for muscle cells intermediate filament. That's a biochem throwback. That'd be your Desmin. So it's Desmin positive. That does it for this video. That does it for vaginal pathology. See you next time.